I hope everyone's feeling good tonight. Hope you enjoyed our meal. I'm going to be doing a couple of songs tonight, and I know that a lot of you know this first one. It's a favorite of mine. I'm going to be singing Wayfaring Stranger. So if anybody would like to join me, please join in. Turn that up, please.
this next song is a new one for me. Um, I heard it the other day for the first time, and I really, the lyrics, it's called Empty Me, Lord. We're having a little trouble getting the CD to play, so try something else. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it on cappello. <laughs> I've done that before, and I'm like, uh-uh, no, nope, no, nope, not again. It's not going to play. Give it a minute. Look at Ed back there with his headphones on. He looks like a technology nerd, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> he just went down. <laughs> if you get it working, that's good. If not, I'll I'll start rolling on and we'll get it figured out. That's good too. Just give me the heads up. All right. Hey, we're gonna go ahead and get our prayer request started. That way, if, if that CD works, we'll all shut it down. Massey family, <coughs> unspoken, Alice and Tommy Boykin, Woolham's family, Joyce Williams. I'm going to open it on up. Okay, I have to be eating some grilled chicken for a while. Amen, yes. Katie, help us, Lord. Oh, man. Amen, let me lift her up. Yes, ma'am. McKenna Guillory, twin. Pregnant with twins. <coughs> All right, cousins to the Hernanda. We got to meet them Sunday. <coughs> Miss Sheila. That's it's fine. Miss Sheila. <coughs> Patricia Bagwell. She's moved to another rehab. Yes, 
Kim Brown. We miss Miss Kim Wyatt. She writes all these down. <coughs> Emily. All right. Emily. Where does she live? Okay. <coughs> all right. Tony. Gilly. The Gilly family. All right. Who else? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, <coughs> game warden, lift them up. I had a good friend that was a game warden for many years. He just passed away a couple of weeks ago, so we <coughs> lift him up. Mr. Jimmy? Randy Dolan. <coughs> Randy Dolan? Yes, ma'am. Barbara? Barbara Brunston. All right. Where y'all headed? Where to now? Kentucky. Oh man, <coughs> y'all gonna be road road travelers? Yes, sir. What's your mom's name, Benjamin? What's that again? All right, Miss Cleveland. All right, Lori. <coughs> Sissy. Villarreal, A R E A L. All right, J N. Good. Charles Weaver. Or Chuck Weaver. Co worker. <coughs> That's good. That's a praise report and prayer. Yes, ma'am. J.D. Martin. All right. J.D. Martin. Miss Sheila. <coughs> Joel White. Man, Miss Leah. All right, Jimmy Granger. All right, Miss Mary. Ukraine. That is a good, good thing. Fighting for their life. Family tore apart. <coughs> we need to pray for. Pray for Ukraine and for peace over there. Yes, sir, Miss Kelly. Olivia Kennedy, he mentioned that the other day. She went to Ireland, got stuck over there with pneumonia. So Olivia Kennedy, <coughs> protection and favor to get. Yes, ma'am. Joshua Dozier. All right, Joshua, those are grandson. Tony? <coughs> Dang, Braxton Morgan, bull rider. Got a concussion and got on another one and broke his leg. That bull riding, <coughs> bull riding stuff. Oh, man. Yes, ma'am, Miss Carolyn. Donald Woodford. Okay.
Okay. That's right. <clears throat> Miss Carolyn, stand up. <laughs> it's a blessing. She broke her femur four weeks ago, and praise the Lord. She's, she's good. So, hey, thank you all for your prayers. Man, we some guys went and fixed a, fixed a ramp for her, fed her cats more than once a week, okay? Y'all make fun of me. <clears throat> but that's what she said, so I thought, well, let's feed it once a week. But <laughs> I, I don't need to be talking about cats when I'm up here, do I? <clears throat> but, hey, that is a, that's a praise report, so it, it's good to see you. Praise God. Anybody else? Our country, amen. Our country. All right. Yes, Miss Cassie. Sandra Greer. All right. Good deal. All right. Anybody? Anybody else? I tell you what, I went and checked on the recovery group. The guys had a good crew, and the ladies had standing room only in their room, so that's, that's good. That's good. <coughs> and we're basically just, you know, getting our, our little tour leader group uh, win Bible studies every Wednesday at 6. So if you hadn't started, you're welcome to do it. The little books are $20. It comes with four books that will walk you through it. So Celebrate Recovery is going to be a huge outreach at our church once we, we're just growing every week. Jane? That's right. Celebrate Recovery. Put that on the list because... You'd be surprised. I, I stepped in both rooms for less than three minutes, and man, God's already moving on hearts and talking about things. Because we all we're all going through something. It may be a little different what you're going through than what I'm going through, or vice versa. But we all got something. And the cool thing is, God cares about what you're going through, and He will help you. He'll walk you through it. When you think you can't make it, you know, you actually can. He'll carry you. So. Miss Kathy, Miss Carol, Miss Kathy's sister Carol. All right, <coughs> I think that's good. So we we still got some ladies in their in their class. Men's gathering tomorrow night. We need to lift that up. That's going to be a, a good outreach. If you hadn't already got on the list, make sure you can get on there. We got uh, seventy plus people on the list, but. It's, we encourage any of you men that are on the list, if you bring a friend, just bring them on. I mean, put them on the list if you can tonight, if you know somebody's coming, but bring somebody with you if you can. It's going to be, be a great outreach. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all you do for us, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to serve you, Lord. Thank you for uh, being good to our church, and we just get to serve you through our, our local church here. We love you. We thank you for all you do for us. We ask you to meet every need. You know, every person, every need that's been lifted up. So we specifically lift them up, those that need healing or strength, comfort or peace. Whatever it is, you are our healer. You're our strength. You are our peace. You're our comforter. And we love you, Lord. <coughs> we love you dearly. And we ask you to move mightily on behalf of every person lift, lifted up tonight. We call them by name. We ask that they would feel the power of prayer as we lift them up. And we praise you for every praise report. And we thank you in advance for working in people's lives that we're lifting up tonight. And we call it done. And we stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, and everybody see it. Miss Joyce. Amen. Hey, that's good. <coughs> Miss Joyce knows how to do it. <laughs> she had that hand up. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Miss Joyce, I appreciate your wisdom the other day for thinking about that boot. We were so busy, and we flipped a hat over, and that was perfect. You got that right. No. I guarantee you, when she said, put that head out, because they maybe somebody want to put a dollar in. You know what I thought about? I mean, I was just so busy that day. I thought about the widow that put in the mic. Y'all remember that? Golly. And that's just, it just touched my heart. So, hey, thank you for being obedient.
I can't, I don't know the totals. I, uh, who, who knows them totals? I know that one of them, one of them went, the glider went for $6,200. <laughs> the swing got seventeen fifty. Okay, 55 and 7. The total was about 10,000 with the boot and all, so. Amen. It was uh, a huge blessing, amen. It's going to be a bigger blessing if my wa wife walks through that door and comes in here. Is she back there? Is she tied up still? Yeah. I'll be glad if she comes in here with that ibuprofen, amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to patiently wait on her. <coughs> All right. Thank God that we can pray one for another. What what some great times we've had here at JC3. And you know, we're just kind of breaking the ground on that. Amen. <coughs> we're going to run through some announcements here. I'll go quick as I can on Wednesdays. But a busy church has a few announcements. Amen. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. Offering. We don't pass the hat at Cowboy Church. There's little wooden boxes in the back. There's uh, wooden uh, boxes as you leave in the foyer. That's where you give of your tithes and offerings. And again... We thank you for what you do. We couldn't do what we do. We do a lot of things. We're not your average church. We're, we're always stretching our belt, amen, doing things, and God seems to bless it abundantly, and he, by his grace, finds a way to supply our needs for everything we do, but he uses God's people. So thank you for your faithfulness. What you got there? All right. Thank you. My wife's got a, a ibuprofen, too. It's uh, 600 milligrams, so I'm going to chase it with this and hit that. Mm. Oh. All right, cold water. <laughs> Almost testified there a little bit. Woo! Sail barn. Don't forget to stop by the sail barn and uh, <coughs> look at the things they got. And one more time, Sunday I mentioned this buckle. Uh, I just kind of, in about three minutes, designed this buckle at Corriente Buckle Company. It's nothing super fancy. It says Jasper County Cowboy Church as the church emblem, but on the bottom it says Jesus is Lord. And uh, my old pastor led me to Christ. I never would uh, say nothing to him, but he had a gold buckle that said Jesus is Lord. And boy, that started working on my heart. And I, uh, Anyway, so that that's what we got here. We had, I believe, how many, Bobby? We had 10 people sign up for these buckles, so they're about a, there's no pressure, but if you want one, I think they're either 100 or $110. I just wanted to show them to everybody. I don't care if you get them or not, but it is advertisement for the church, but if you need a nice little handmade buckle, there they are. So make sure and get with Bobby if you hadn't already signed up, if you'd like one of those buckles. It's just another billboard for JC3. It's a little more expensive. We didn't want to put no pressure on nobody, but. We've had 10 people sign up, so make sure tonight and get on the list, or you can look at this buckle after church. I'm going to give it back to Miss Bobby, <laughs> and uh, you can look at it one more time if you uh, are interested in one. All right, men's prayer breakfast, 6 a.m. every Monday. Lori, bunch of new hats. Did we get one of them, one I'm looking for yet? Okay. I got I got I got dibs on one, but a bunch of new hats. We sell out of hats all the time, so we're keeping the hat people in business too. So thank y'all for uh, picking up a hat. Men's prayer breakfast, uh, nursery. You got a uh, if you drop a child off in the nursery, watch the displays, round pins every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Celebrate recovery is on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. Um, Beulah, this Sunday I will not be here preaching, but Cody Rain will be preaching. He's upstairs preaching to the teenagers now, and uh, so I'll be in Beulah. But we want to encourage anybody that would like to drive to Beulah. It's a little bitty small community where I grew up, and uh, what you do if you go to uh, Zavala, leave on 69 North like you're going to Huntington, just two or three miles north of uh, Zavala is Farm Road 1818. Anybody know where that is? You take a left on 1818. You'll go through a four-way stop sign, stay on 1818. The next intersection will be several miles on down. That'll be the little community of Beulah. It'll be 1818 and Farm Road 58T. You can only take a ride on 58. 
go up there two or three miles, you can't miss it. The volunteer fire department for Beulah, uh, the community center and the church are all on the same property. There's not a lot of signal there, so be committed. <laughs> once, you, once you get there, you'll get it found. Or you can type in Beulah Community Center uh, on your map, and it should lead you. It'll start at 10 o'clock. It's homecoming, a little bitty country church. So whoever chooses to come, thank you for coming, number one. It kind of makes the homecoming, uh, you know, as they get older, it's harder and harder to get a crowd together. But uh, bring us uh, a covered dish, and we're going to have a little dinner on the grounds. If the weather's good, we'll do it outside. So it'll start at 10 o'clock. It'll be over around 12 or a little before we have some music. Actually, part of our band, we, we're blessed. we got two bands, so one of our bands will be in Beulah. So that, that's this Sunday, If you, uh, but Cody will be preaching, and so we encourage you to be here. He'll do a great job as well. Men's gathering tomorrow night. How many men are coming that are here tonight? Amen, almost all of us. So we're going to have a uh, skeet shoot at 6 o'clock. If you're going to shoot skeet, bring your own gun and your ammo. Bring a box of skeet if you can have access to them. Make sure we got enough. We got three or four boxes in my office. But uh, we're going to shoot skeet. And then around 7, we're going to have a fish fry. So we're going to feed you in the foyer. Some of the ladies from the hospitality team, y'all got us fixed up. Miss Cindy, we're good. Paper plates, all that. Ketchup, side stuff. Uh, the ladies in the hospitality team are going to take care of us. We're great, grateful for that. We're going to have some good fish, hush puppies, french fries. It's going to be a good time. And Cody Rahm is going to give a little uh, quick devotion as we eat. Bleachers are coming along. We've been out there looking at it. It's going great. Let's make sure and get out our yard signs for the rodeo. If we, uh, if any of you go in either direction, want to get some yard signs, we need to get some tonight, Miss Allison, and and uh, start putting them out on the way back. <coughs> is that uh, that ibuprofen? Six hundred. All right. I'm going to take that thing right now. <coughs> Ooh, they gave me some cold water, and I like the left here. Yeah, just some tap water. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's an antibiotic. Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to need some tap water. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I think that's it. 6.40 a.m. Man, you'd be surprised the people that watch our little devotions in the morning. How many of you enjoyed Tuesday testimony last night? <laughs> Scott, he knocked it out of the park. So if you hadn't watched it, go back and look at it on Jasper County Cowboy Church Facebook page. Scott did a great job. Next week, we're going to have uh, uh, Kelly and Reagan Williamson. <coughs> a little legend was in a horse accident and... You know, you can't walk through something until you face it. But I found this in life. Whatever you go through, if you'll trust Jesus, he will give you the grace to walk the road that is before you. And you'd, you you wouldn't think you could do it. Until you, and I see Jimmy shaking his head. I see lots of people. We've all walked through something. How many of you walked through something you thought was going to kill you? But you know what? God gives us the grace to walk the road that is before us. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. And he leads us and guides us one step at a time. We think about next year and next month and all that, and usually it never works out like we thought anyway. Amen? But he will walk us. And they got a great testimony. It's a, it's a, it was a horrible situation, but in the midst of that, many, many young people and adults as well have come to Christ. So they're going to be on their next uh, this coming Tuesday for testimonies. They live in Lufkin and they're friends of ours, so it's going to be a good day. Barrel race. Shane Young wants to do a barrel race May the 15th uh, before the rodeo just to get get the ground ready, let some of the barrel racers come out and, and test out the ground. So May the 15th, we're fixing to get ready to preach. I didn't mean to come up here and take no medicine in front of y'all, but <coughs> I had my tooth pulled a molar this morning, and it's been great. <coughs> they told me I couldn't preach tonight, and I said, y'all just hide and watch. 
All right, so I'm good. But I, I did run out of ibuprofen, I can tell you that, and I'm, I'm thankful to get it. I'm glad to see Miss Allison come around that corner. <laughs> That's all right. Man, I don't know. Right now it might be a little touchy and hard to handle. <laughs> First thing you got to do is catch me, and if you catch me, you're going to be war slap out and easy to whoop then. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, it, it, it's all good. I'm, I'm just glad that I can, you know, I don't let much hold me down. I don't miss church if, if there's any way possible unless it's to help another church out or something like we do at Beulah. But that's all of our announcements. If you have your Bible, <clears throat> let's open it up. I didn't even give Miss Cheryl my scriptures tonight, so isn't that a blessing? Your appointment for, all right, so y'all lift up Miss Valerie. She goes in for some thyroid tests tomorrow, Allison. Okay, just come on up. We got you handled. You, you got the open door. <laughs> no, no, at the end. The pastor's wife, she can just walk right on up, right? You don't even have to say nothing. Me? No, I'm not leaving the room. <laughs> hey, I can promise you that. <coughs> All right. Miss Cheryl, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah. Don't get up here and tell them you're pregnant now. <laughs> I ain't leaving the room now. <laughs> hey, that scared her off. <laughs> Miss Cheryl, I'm going to give you, <laughs> hey, this tooth would be the least of my worries if that happened. You know, my dad was 50 when he had me. That poor fella, don't you know, he walked around the woodshed and rubbed his head a little bit. My brother said, and my sister said, you know, I don't know what you did, but you inspired daddy. He always was a hard worker, but he never made, you know, a lot of money, and he never really did, but he said, Something about when you were born and he was 50, he opened every business that come to mind. And he finally, he finally made it pretty well in the used car business. He had financed cars. And one time I'll never forget, I was a little bitty boy. Daddy had a, a saw shop on Highway 59 in Die Ball right there. And uh, my brother worked as a mechanic on them chainsaws. And my dad had a little car lot that he financed, you know, lot. And one day, a guy came in. I, I was a little bitty feller, but I remember this like it was yesterday. My dad was a nice guy, but no nonsense. He wasn't going to let you run over him. And so this guy comes and gets in this car and cranks it up, and he's got his head out, and I'll never forget he had his left foot on the ground. So he's, he's, he's cranked his car up, and he's listening to the motor, and he stomps the pedal to the floor. Whoom, whoom. And I'll never forget, my, my dad tapped him on the head with his knuckle. He said, The old boy grabbed his head and let off the gas pedal. He said, we don't do that around here. unless you, If you want to buy it for the full price, you can, you, you can blow it up right now. But until you buy it, you're not going to do that. So, But anyway, Daddy, I think I give my dad a little hustle, so to speak. And, and uh, he, he went in the car business and fiddled around. I think that's where I got it from. Usually I'm always peddling a vehicle or something, so it come naturally. But Miss Cheryl, we're kind of going to go on Proverbs and... Uh, like we did the other day, I am going to add Philippians 4, verse 6 through 9. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 25, and we can just keep reading through part of chapter 14, if that's okay. Numbers chapter 13, verse 25, and then we can go right on through verse chapter 14, verse 11, through verse 11. We probably won't read them all, but that's where we'll end up over the next couple of weeks, so... Let's, uh, let's pray and get rolling. Lord, we ask you to speak to us tonight. Thank you for a wonderful opportunity we have to, to serve you. I just want to thank you for blessing us with a great church, Lord, and letting us have a home that we can love you and be ourselves. Oh, we can't even take no credit, Lord. You're moving in our church, and we're so thankful. We're just vessels, and we're just PVC pipe. We just thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. Thank you that you're working on our hearts individually, Lord, that we're drawing closer to you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. 
James chapter 1 was our scripture that we've used for a text for two weeks. James chapter 1, I'm kind of throwing this on Miss Cheryl. I was uh, checking on those meetings, so I didn't get to give her a lot of scriptures, but <clears throat> we'll run through them quick. James 1.19, then we'll do Proverbs 18.21. James 1.19 says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get powerful verse i encourage you put that on the refrigerator amen you're gonna need it all right <clears throat> proverbs 18 21 we're talking about the power of words and how our tongue is a small member but <clears throat> it, it can do a lot of damage it can do a lot of good and that is left up to us it says the tongue can bring death or life those who love to talk will reap the consequences so our tongue can bring what death or life so it, it's the power of the tongue is in our hands we can use words to be very encouraging and to build up amen or we can also use words to tear down proverbs 11 verse 12 from uh, a couple of weeks ago and if miss cheryl don't have that up there i'll just jump in here and read it it says it is foolish to belittle one's neighbor a sensible person keeps I'll read it again. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps what? Quiet. We, you know, you ever hear the old saying, if you don't have something good to say, just don't say nothing at all. How many of you know that's hard to do sometimes? <laughs> I got tickled at one of my buddies. He texted me today, and I said, man, all right, he had, I think, a prayer request or something. I said, well, I'm sitting in a chair fixing to pull my tooth out. He said, oh, Lord, I'm going to pray for you. And so he did pray for me. He said, I pray for you over this text. He sent me a nice prayer, and he said, also pray for my mouth. <laughs> that, that it gets it saved. Amen. <laughs> now, nobody's making eye contact because you don't want somebody next to you to think it was you, right? But our, our tongue, the Bible says that no man can tame the tongue. That tongue, you could be doing so good, and that tongue can get you you can be doing great you can be you can think that you got a cape on and call yourself mega christian right but that old tongue can slip up on you let me tell y'all something happened to me today anybody else in here bold enough to tell a story i'm pretty well good about picking on myself allison and bailey had to go to town miss miss allison thought she had a dentist appointment she's getting old she forgot what day it was i'm i'm just joking the dentist, that was a joke, that was a joke. I told you, tongue gets you in trouble. That's fine. She, the dentist got it mixed up, but they had a lot of errands to do, so they went to town, and by that time, I'm starting to get hungry, and I realized, you know, I can't eat nothing that's re but real soft, and I cook eggs quite a bit, but I cooked a couple of fried eggs there right quick, and I tried to, you got you to gotta put the egg in, lean your head over, and ease that baby down, because if it gets in, I got a hole big enough over here to put a cat in. <laughs> it feels like it, it's a nice one. And so you got to be careful. So I cook these eggs, and I'm doing good, and I'm going to wash the skillet out. And I set that skillet down in the sink and touch my end of my thumb to that skillet. I forgot all about my tooth. Man, I jumped up there and hollered around there and did a did a... I think I was doing a little bit of break dancing in the kitchen. Man, I jumped around there and thought, good Lord. So I slammed that skillet down and put some water on it. And, but there for a minute, boy, I, I thought a few words. Golly, that was hot. Burnt the end of my thumb, you know. But we can be doing great and something happened that unexpected and our tongue is the first thing we got to get a hold to. Anybody ever seen it? seen anybody riding a colt maybe with a snaffle bit and you ain't, he ain't really got no woe to him yet ain't got a lot of brakes and what you got to do you got you, you got to double grab slide your hands down them reins and start pulling down around the, the swells of that saddle you're trying to get him to break at the pole and stop Does that make sense and so with our tongue sometimes we got to really get a hold <laughs> we got to get a hold of that uh, that tongue and that's actually uh, one illustration in james about the tongue is says a bit can direct a horse 
and, and with a little small bit, and so is the tongue. It's a small member, but it has a lot of power and basically says no man can tame the tongue. All right, let's go to Proverbs 16, verse 24. It says, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and healthy for the what? Body. Kind words are sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. You can get a lot more done by speaking kind words than harsh words. How many of us been married long enough to get that figured out? No, we laugh about it, but and it doesn't matter if it's in a relationship. It doesn't matter if it's at work, and you learn that kind word. You can find a way to get people to, you know, if, if you're needing to communicate something, there's a way to do that other than just being harsh with your words. Because a lot of times, most people, if you're harsh with your words to them, they shut you down and don't really hear anything you're saying. They're trying to work on a comeback already while you're talking. But if you can speak kind words, or, or at the same time, you may have to correct somebody, or if, if you're in leadership, I understand that. But there is a way to do that, to try to do it in a nice way. Now, if someone don't listen after 14 times, you're going to have to do what you got to do. Amen. <laughs> any, any bosses in the house tonight, all right? Sometimes you got to make it where everybody can understand it. But <laughs> kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy to the body. And that's why I encourage y'all so much, to, especially when you're out in public and you're representing Christ, and we do everywhere we go, we're a representation of Christ, especially when you see somebody that might be down and out or struggling, take the few moments to just encourage them and say, you know what, I don't know what you're going through, I don't even care, but God, God loves you. Can I get a good amen? amen. <laughs> he believes in you. So let's go to... Proverbs 25, verse 18. Telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe. <laughs> pretty, pretty powerful. <laughs> Telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe. Wounding them with a sword or shooting them with a sharp arrow. So words are very powerful. Matter of fact, even though we may know somebody has fallen or made a mistake, or however you want to put it, really, what good does repeating that do? None whatsoever. Except get somebody else besides us talking about it. Now, I, you know what I like to spread? I encourage you to go gossip the good news as hard and fast as you can. Go, go tell good news. But it's sad to say that bad news travels fast. You can, you can go into a coffee shop and tell some bad news, and it's gone. You'll, you'll never catch back up with it. It's grown a little bit, all right? If you tell somebody so-and-so, you know, had this problem, and, and, you know, within five minutes it's probably double, and then it triples, and then it grows. But good news, sad to say, travels slower. Except when you know Jesus. Because the gospel is what? Good news. And so, telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe. Nobody wants an axe, right? <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> Wounding them with a sword or shooting them with a sharp arrow. So, we don't want to uh, speak evil of someone. Even when someone has made mistakes, and I use the illustration of Noah... And I used this a few weeks ago. We all know that Noah was on a boat, <laughs> an ark, with his family. So we joke and call it a family reunion. He was with, stuck with his family for 40 days and couldn't get away from them. And the first thing he did when he got off the boat was he got drunk. You think, is that in the Bible? Absolutely. <laughs> they were people just like you and I. So Noah got drunk, and his sons really encouraged me because his sons, when he was passed out, his sons backed into the tent and covered his nakedness. And they walked out. And as a believer and a follower of Christ, I've learned through many years when people stumble and fall, which they do on a daily basis, 
we all do, I've learned to back in, cover it up, pray for them, and say, let's go on and do what Jesus called us to do. But if you start spreading rumors and lies, you know, that God's not pleased with that kind of thing. Matter of fact, I don't have to preach on it a lot here because I never hear any of it, but the Bible is full of scriptures about busybodies. And the crowd roared with an enthusiastic amen. Hey, I'm glad. We, we pay attention. We, we're trying to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. But the Bible talks about busybodies and people that spread things. And you know, the Bible tells us clearly, clearly what to think on. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to find that in my Bible as well. Philippians chapter 4. Thank you all for that little Tylenol. It's working. I ran that cold water down in there for a minute. I thought I was going to have to leave. <laughs> Man, I was so hungry today, and Allison and Bailey was in town. I said, would y'all please get me something soft? I said, I, ha I, got, I know what I want. I want a, a smoothie from Smoothie King. I said, just get me a chocolate one. I don't know. That that's always my favorite. But I said, get me a little protein powder in it because I don't work out. So I figure if I drink protein powder, you know, it'll make you have muscles, right? <coughs> get me a little protein powder. And so they found me in town. I was getting oil changed in my vehicle. And I said, I'm heading to the, to the feed store. I was still kind of having a little trouble talking then. I'm doing good now. But so I went in. So they met me at the feed store and they gave me. That Smoothie King smoothie, which I couldn't chew anything hard. I did let a few, a couple of eggs slide down the left side. Didn't even really get to taste them. <clears throat> so I got that smoothie, and I wasn't thinking. I took. A, I said I knew I couldn't suck through a straw, so I grabbed me a spoon, and I slapped a bunch in my mouth and filled that hole right full of cold ice. <laughs> Woo! I was testifying at the feed store. I mean, it was okay. It took my breath away for a second, and I learned right quick, keep it on the other side. And so from then on, they probably thought I was something wrong with me. I took that spoon and put it over here and slid it down my throat at the feed store. They're probably like, there's a guy at the dock that needs some medical attention. <laughs> but I was so thankful to get, <laughs> to get that smoothie. Amen. Thank you all for getting it for me, too. Amen. And I called them, and I said, what are you all doing? They said, well... We're sitting here at Slotsky's. <laughs> I said, well, while y'all doing that, could y'all get me a smoothie? And they did and brought it to me <laughs> after they ate theirs, right. Philippians chapter 4, we're going to look at verse 6 through verse 9. <clears throat> when, you, when you talk about our words and what should we talk about, what should we think on, think about it like this. 90% of the time, what you think on is going to come out of your mouth, right? If you think on it long enough, where's it gonna, what's going to happen? It's going to come out. And so that's why we have to guard our mind. Our, our tongue is a powerful tool. Our tongue is like nitroglycerin. Words are like nitroglycerin. You can heal hearts or blow up bridges. And many years, we talked about the strength team. You can punch somebody and get a bruise on them, but that bruise will eventually go away. But words... Can hurt us much, much deeper. So, what do we think on? Because what we, what we tend to think on tends to come out of our mouth. Verse six says, "Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done." Now that's 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 an instruction on how to pray. Don't worry about anything. That's hard to do, but yet it's doable because God tells us to do it. Instead, pray about what <clears throat> everything. Now listen to this. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. That's where we miss it sometimes. We tell Him what we need over and over and over. And yes, we tell Him what we need, but then we thank Him for all He's already done. And when you start thanking God for what He's done, He begins to work on your behalf. Because He is moved by our gratitude by our humbleness and our, our thankfulness for what God... If God never done anything for any of us ever again, He's been awful good to us because we're still here today. And He's not going to quit being good to us. I'm just saying, He's done a lot for every one of us. 
So we need to pray, tell God what we need, and then thank Him for what He's already done. Verse 7, then you will experience God's what? Peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will do what? Guard your hearts. What else will it guard? And minds. See, God's peace guards your hearts, guards your minds, as you live in Christ Jesus. Verse 8 says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your what? <clears throat> Fix our thoughts. Our, our mind is like a vacuum cleaner. It's always sucking in thoughts. But you have to be in charge of the thoughts that you entertain. The Bible says in Corinthians that you can cast down any thought or imagination, which is a thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. How many of you ever had a bad thought? If you didn't raise your hand, you just straight up lied tonight. <laughs> We've all had bad thoughts. And you're probably not done having a bad thought. It's just what do you do with that bad thought? Any of you ever had a riff with someone before? Probably not any of us. You have, and you may have had a bad thought. And, you know, we have to, we, the Bible says we're to cast down that thought. And then God tells us here what we are to think on. He says, the peace of God guards your heart and mind as you live in Christ. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts, and here's the list, on what is true. If it's true, we're going to back up to true just for a second. Just because it's true don't mean you share it with the world. Even though a statement may be true, yes, uh, my buddy so-and-so is going through a hard time. It may be true, but that don't mean we share it with the world. I, I learned a long time ago, the best thing you can do when, when, you, when you know people have a situation is, is just don't say anything about it unless, unless they bring it up. Because we all got something. We all got a chapter that we don't want read. I've said it so much now, y'all can finish it. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable. Everybody say honorable. honorable. Right. right. Pure. Pure. Lovely. Lovely. And admirable. So that tells us what we are to think on. Think about things that are excellent. Praise God. You know, God is a God of excellence. Think about things that are excellent and what? Worthy of praise. So let's don't let our mind just be a, a vacuum cleaner that just picks up a bunch of trash, amen? That, how many of you ever had to use a vacuum cleaner and you get the filter out and what do you do? You go outside and what? Shake it out. Everybody say shake it out. So sometimes your mind, you got to shake it out. How many of you have seen those old filters sometimes? You're like, Lord, whose house was this? I know that didn't come out of my house. But that vacuum cleaner, the, the filter will, will be dirty. And what do we got to do? We got to shake it out. We got to clean it off. And our thought, we are responsible for our thoughts. How many of you have ever had, and I really think Satan is, is really attacks our thought life as a Christian. How many of you have had a thought about something and you blew it up bigger than it really was? Man, we all have. And, you know, we had it all figured, I bet you so-and-so said this, and I bet you this happened, and I bet they said this, and most of it, probably none of it, many times is the case. But, man, we just look like, we're just, we just take off after it. We, 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 got, we got a dog or two at our house. And a few of those dogs, they love to fetch stuff. And sometimes our little schnauzer, Annie, when she's in the house, she just had puppies, and she's thankful that her puppies are leaving, so she gets to come back in the house. But you can take a toy and throw it, and boy, Annie will, she'll take off after that toy and go get it, you know. And, and that's good, but sometimes we're like that. We just take off, and we have to filter our thoughts because there's all kinds of thoughts that goes through your mind. Amen? And you're in charge over your thoughts because we want our words to be wise and good. It says, fix your thoughts on it. And he goes down the list. If it's excellent and worthy of praise, verse 9 says, keep putting 
into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. So we want to fix our thoughts on what are true and lovely. Amen? And now we're going to take a different route. We'll, look, we'll go to Numbers next Wednesday night, but we're going to challenge ourselves to start speaking words of faith out of our mouth. Because it's so easy to speak negativity sometimes. Amen? And so we have to train ourselves and start seeing ourselves the way God sees us. And I'm challenging myself and you to speak words of faith. It's just as easy to speak words of faith as it is words of doubt. And we've all been there. We're, we, we get discouraged. Anybody in this room ever battled with depression? And don't lie. I'm telling you, that I hope you are in here and say you've never battled with the depression. But if you're honest, I bet you 99.9% .9 of us have. And it's in between our ears is where it starts. You ain't good enough. God wouldn't love you. And every time you get fired up to live for Jesus, you know what's going to happen? Well, I don't know that God could... You know, maybe it's somebody else. I'm not talking about any of us, right? But it's so thoughts, and the battle is in your mind. Joyce Meyer wrote a book called "The Mind Is Is a Battleground or a Playground," and you got to cast those thoughts down. And, and Satan, we looked at it this morning or Tuesday last night in our devotion. The Bible, Revelation 12, says the accuser of the brethren. Satan is an accuser. And so we, got, we, we don't have to buy into every thought that comes in our mind. Tell that buddy to keep on trucking, amen? And we, we want to think on things that are pure and true and lovely and praiseworthy. We want to think on what does God say about Chet? What does God say about Miss Joy? What does God say about Mr. DJ or Miss Allison or Bailey or whoever it may be, what does God say about you? He says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. See, I, I can have my own pep rally, preach myself so happy, I run around the church, go get in the car and go home. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but I can encourage myself. David encouraged himself in, in the Lord. But the only reason I can do that is because I know a little bit, I got a lot to learn, but I know a little bit about what this book says. I'm not depending on, well, you know, Cousin Willie told me this or that. I know what it says. I don't know what it, There's a lot I need to learn, but I know what God says about us if we've given our heart to Jesus Christ. That we can do all things through Christ. That we can make it. It don't matter if there seems to be no way. That's just when God gets ready to do something. When there seems to be no way. But it's important for me to line my mouth up with what I believe in my heart as well. Amen? And we need to, to, to speak those things over our lives. So we're going to take off with this next week. But again, we've got to see ourselves the way God sees us. I mean, we're, our Heavenly Father loved us so much that He gave His only Son to die on the cross. And he, not only to die on the cross for us and save us, but once we're saved, we're soldiers in the army of God. And He wants us to show up. And our boots need to be shined. We need to be ready for service. And God will use you, and he'll abuse you. If you really want to be in ministry, he'll use you. I heard an old old preacher one time named E.V. Hill. And y'all heard me talk about him. E.V. Hill was an old black preacher, and he used to say, I was reared in a log cabin in Texas. I think he was in California, but he said, I was reared, and uh, old folks said I was reared in a log cabin in Texas. He said, we grew up in the Depression, and we were not poor because we didn't know we was poor. <laughs> we had a few old chickens that we'd have to catch and <laughs> pull the feathers off, and Mama would cook them chickens and make dumplings, and boy, he'd have some fun preaching. And he said, we were so poor we couldn't pay attention, but we didn't know it. And yet he, he preached, and he had a gold chair one day, and he used Joseph as an example. And he said, if you want to be in ministry, you better be ready to sit in that chair. 
It says, Joseph, remember Joseph? He went through all kinds of tests and trials. And the very people that tried to take him out, God brought them right back in front of him. And if his heart hadn't been right, what would he have done? Oh, I got a place for you boys. Come on in. Jesus don't work like that. He forgave his brothers. The Bible says he went out back and even cried. And God used Joseph mightily to deliver that country out of a famine because of his heart. So we have to be, when we, when we surrender to Jesus, there's no telling what he's going to call you to do. He can take Beulah kids that barely can read and write and make them preachers. He can do all kinds of things. He, he can take ordinary people. I, I know so many cool people in, in 30 years of ministry. It's humbling. I know a guy that Travel from town to town on an old Harley Davidson motorcycle and preach the Bible. <laughs> I'll see him again. This his name was Spanky. I don't know if he's still alive, but I'll see him again in heaven one day. I never forget him. He'd come to my church and he'd talk about, man, we had a biker rally out here. Man, there was a bunch of guys come to Jesus, and so I went to a biker rally with him. You got a bull rider, a cowboy, going to a biker rally. I was, hey, I wasn't scared. I was scared. I thought, I don't fit in out here. They could take me out. And I watched him pull up his little motorcycle, <laughs> motorcycle, get him a few chairs and say, we're going to have church at the biker rally. So I go out there with him. I thought I was going to get knocked in the head, so I put on me a pair of them black chaps like a biker. <laughs> I really did. I put on some chaps. I dressed up with him. And we went out there, he gave me all these patches, this vest, all about Jesus. And he started announcing, Spanky's going to have church. Man, they was guys, they was rough. If I was ever in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a brawl at night, I wanted these guys, and they come walking in. Some of them rode up on the old Harley, blah, 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 and just kicked the kickstand down, and that was their chair for church. Rough, man. A lot of them, man, they had barbed wire around their arms. I liked it. Back then, I was in the gym. I thought, dang, I like these old dudes. They all gathered around, and Spanky began to talk about Jesus. Just an old guy that was a, he was a recovered drug addict. Jesus saved him at a biker rally, and he spent his life going and preaching to those guys. Those guys was not going to put on a three-piece suit and go into a church. They pulled them old Harleys up, and he told them about Jesus. And those big, rough guys, I'd see a little bit of leakage out of their eyes looking off at Jesus. God can do extraordinary things through all of us. The first thing God calls you to do, and I'm over time three minutes, and you'll never get it back. The first thing he calls you to do is be a witness for you. If you're a grandpa... He calls you to be a godly grandpa. Let people, to love your grandkids, to love your family. If you're a mom, your first call is to be a mom. And all those other things will take place. Just be you and let Jesus shine in your heart. So next week, we're going to look at the 12 spies that went into the promised land. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We went over four minutes, Lord, but I pray that we go from here different than we came in here, Lord. Your word is powerful, and our tongue is powerful. And may we use it for productive things instead of destructive things. We love you, Lord. Help us to continue to tame our tongue. May we think on what is pure and just and lovely in Jesus' name. It's out. I have to get a chair because it's a demonstration. Okay. Oh, boy. Where do I need to get out of the way? Okay. So as some of y'all may have seen on Facebook, we went Easter Sunday to see Chet's sister at the um, little nursing home, the memory care. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. And so... These extra five minutes, you ain't gonna, it ain't going to hurt your feelings. It, this is funny. Right. And so anyway, we went in there, and we were sitting there. There were four chairs. They were small chairs, and we were all sitting kind of facing each other. Chet, me, go ahead, have a seat in your chair. 
And then Chet's sister was sitting here, and Bailey was there. So this little lady was wandering around in the, you know, in the thing. It's memory care, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, and she's a sweet little lady. And so she, she eased up there to Chet, and she's looking at him. And she says, uh, scoot over. And the chair was not it much had bigger. sides on it. Yeah, it was not a My big chair. My eyes got big. And so she says, uh, scoot over, I want to sit down. No, she tells him, she says, scoot over. You put your leg. She had to yeah, she, she, Yeah, so she'd have room. And she squeezed in there, <laughs> in that chair with him. <laughs> and then, and she's sitting there like this. And I've been putting my arm around me. And she's sitting there. <laughs> I, did, I, I was like this. <laughs> And she was, uh, and he had the funniest look on his face. Me and Bailey were going, oh, wow. They was laughing, yeah. taking pictures. Well, and face. then, but wait, but then she goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going. Me and Bailey were like. <laughs> and, and, and I told Bailey, I said, get your camera, get your camera. And so, and she was, she was like this. Hey, I put, the, I put the clank on it. I did that. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but he was, she was like this, and she was patting on him, and I was going, ooh, I see. And anyway, <laughs> we were laughing. It was, she was just like. Like I said, some things are just better not talked about. <laughs> but we got a picture of it for y'all. <laughs> at, at that point, she didn't. You can see her hand. She didn't have it, but she was, like, fixing to ease it over there. And uh, You could tell I was a touch embarrassed. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was t five shades of red. <coughs> see, look how red. We laughed. I'm telling y'all, it was so funny. Thank God a guy could see me that worked there about from here to the foyer, and he looked at me and went. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's Miss Green. She's sweet as ever. Yeah. I said, yes, ma'am, Miss Green. <laughs> yeah, but he was so sweet, though, which, you know. <laughs> he was. He yeah, really, I, was but trying it was to get, I was trying to get out of there, but I, I was trapped, <laughs> Clayton. Anyway, it was Thanks really cute. Thanks for sharing that. I tell You're you welcome. what. I'm going to pray us out of here. <laughs> Lord, we love you. Let us be doers of the word, not hearers only. And Lord, thank you that we can love life. Living for you is a journey. We never know what's going to happen from day to day. But if we trust you, you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. So if it ain't a cat story, it's something like that. And, and that would be the only time that a woman's going to put his, her hand on Chet's leg that she ain't going to get it. 